Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, we've learned a lot of sturm liouville theory, and in particular in the previous video, we saw how to apply it to more complex partial differential equations. I would like to continue doing that in this video, and I would like to show you the method of eigenfunction expansion. And I'm gonna do it with a specific PDE in mind, but you are smart, you are watching this, you understand hopefully what's going on, and you can easily apply this method to a wide variety of related problems, okay? So here's what I wanna do. Here's my PDE that I wanna focus on for this uh, exploration. Let's go back to the heat equation, okay? You could do the wave equation if you wanted to. There would be no real difference. I'm going to look at a really simple version of the, the heat equation, the one that we've been solving, you know, sort of over and over and over again. But let's make it a little more interesting. Let's imagine there's some sort of heat source, some external heat source being applied to this thing. So remember, whenever we derived the heat equation in like the first video of this lecture, we came up with a pretty general equation that included these external heat sources, right? This Heat source could vary across the rod, and it could vary in time as well. I'm not gonna put any specifics on this thing. Okay, this is the PDE that I would like to solve. And here I'm gonna put some boundary conditions on it. Let's just use uh, fixed boundary conditions. So in my case, I'll just fix the temperature at either end of the rod to be zero, homogeneous boundary conditions. And of course, we need an initial temperature distribution. I will just call that thing uh, F. Okay, so here's my general setup for my partial differential equation. And what I would like to do is I'd like to sort of start by recalling something that I can solve. And what I can solve is the homogeneous PDE. So homogeneous, remember this homogeneous terminology comes from uh, linear operators, right? So you might have to go back and recall our lecture on linearity. But the homogeneous PDE here is just our usual heat flow equation. Uh, sorry, no squared. Uh, squared goes on the derivatives here, right? So just our usual sort of diffusion equation along with the, the sort of boundary conditions that go right here. And we know that the solution to this thing, right, we've done this uh, many, many times now, or at least we did it once in full detail, and then we've done versions of it over and over. This is really sine n pi x over L e to the minus, and then k n pi over L squared t. Okay. So the question is, how can we leverage this information in order to solve this PDE up here, okay? Well, let's take a look at this. Everything has the same spatial modes, right? These are the sturm liouville eigenfunctions, and then they just decay in time. So what I would like to do is, is for this PDE right here, I would like to set u to again be an eigenfunction expansion with potentially time varying coefficients. And here, I'm going to assume that phi n are the uh, sturm liouville eigenfunctions associated to the homogeneous problem. So in my case, the phi n's are gonna be sine of n pi x over L. These are the spatial modes, right? And the important piece of this, why I'm doing this, is because I know that sturm liouville functions, they form a basis, a complete basis. I can always expand functions in them. The point here now is that my function is a function of both space and time. That means that I've got space covered by sturm liouville and so that means I need to determine time, right? So the difference between these two expansions is they have the same spatial mode, but they have different time dynamics potentially. And the time dynamics are gonna be influenced by what happens here, okay? So the goal now is to determine what these a, n of t's actually do. One other thing I want you to notice is because these things already satisfy the boundary conditions, I've got boundary conditions covered. That's good, right? 
Let's look at one more thing before we start solving this. The initial condition, well, the initial condition gives me f of x is equal to, well, a n of 0, phi n of x. So that means that the, the initial values of my a n's, right, they are going to be determined by the the eigenfunction expansion, the sturm liouville expansion of my initial condition in the same way that they were previously, right? Setting t equal to zero here drops this out and this a n would be determined by my initial condition, right? So if we just, if we wanted to write this nicely, a n of zero, this gives me the integral from zero to l, f of x, uh, phi n of x dx divided by zero to L phi n squared of x dx. Now I'm trying to write this in a little bit of generality so you can apply this to other problems. But of course I didn't put sigma in here, right? So if this was a general sturm liouville expansion, you would have to include orthogonality with respect to the sigma variable or the sigma function. But here I am trying to keep a little bit of generality but instead of writing sine every time I'm writing phi n to emphasize that these are eigenfunctions of a sturm liouville problem. But here's the point. Since these things satisfy the boundary conditions, I can do derivatives, right? So we learned about taking derivatives of sine and cosine and Fourier series. Same things happen here. So let's actually take some derivatives. So the partial derivative with respect to t of u, this is going to be, again, I can do term by term or term-wise differentiation. This is dan divided by dt. Of, of t, just to emphasize this, phi n of x. And if I do a second order derivative of uh, my function in space, now I get two derivatives of my sturm liouville eigenvalues, right? Or eigenfunctions, pardon me which, because they satisfy the homogeneous sturm liouville problem, this is going to give me uh, minus the sum a n of t lambda n phi n of x. So again, I get an expansion in terms, both of these derivatives are expanded in terms of the eigenfunctions of the sturm liouville problem, right? Now, the only difference is if you have a different homogeneous equation and you have different sturm liouville eigenvalues, this expression will be manipulated slightly differently, but you will still see that you still get the eigenfunction expansion. So you should be able to follow this for uh, a variety of different problems. So let's put this into the PDE. And by that, I mean the, the big one here. Well, what I get is the sum from n greater than or equal to one. So I'm gonna pull all of this onto one side and I'm gonna leave q on the other side, okay? So here I get this big summation. I can organize them by their eigenfunction. And so I get a n prime of t. I'm just gonna use prime for derivatives now because it's ordinary derivative, right? Single variable derivative. Plus lambda n k. Don't forget the k here. The, this becomes a plus. I pull this over, it becomes minus. This minus will cancel with it, so I get a plus here. And then a n of t phi n of x is equal to q of x and t. So the question is, how do I solve this? Well, I can do an eigenfunction expansion of q as well. So let's do an expansion. So expand Q of X and T, right? It can be projected onto each one of these basis elements, these eigenfunctions, right? It's a complete basis. It means every function can be written as an expansion of this thing. And so here now I get a summation as well. I'm gonna say Q N of T, right? The coefficients are time dependent and then phi N of x. I can do that, right? That's what Sturm-Liouville theory tells me. 
And so therefore, now when I line, when I put this up here, and when I line things up by the eigenfunction, if I match eigenfunctions, so therefore, for all n, we get, well, what is it that we get? We get ordinary differential equations, and they look like this. A n prime, right, plus lambda n k a n is equal to q n of t. This is a simple ordinary differential equation. This is the kind of thing that you could solve. Maybe if you were watching my previous lecture series on ordinary differential equations, you can solve this with an integrating factor. You sort of just multiply through by an exponential function, do some integration. And in that case, you get a solution. And what does my solution look like? Well, I get a n of t is equal to the initial condition a n of zero times e to the minus lambda n k t. That's this term right here, the homogeneous part, right? And then plus e to the minus lambda n k t, and then an integral because we don't know exactly what this is, so we can just write this in a sort of general formation. Zero to t q n of s, a dummy integrating variable, e to the lambda n k s ds. So unfortunately you can't just kind of solve this right off the bat because we don't know exactly what qn is, but if we knew, you know, if we had a specific q here, we could do all these projections, all these expansions, and we could put this thing in and we could solve this. We would get a, a solution to this inhomogeneous equation in terms of these eigenfunction expansions. The beautiful part here is that you completely decouple, right? And the decoupling comes from the orthogonality of these eigenfunctions and the fact that they solve your homogeneous sturm liouville problem. Again, if you do this for a more complicated uh, uh, partial differential equation, maybe something like the, the inhomogeneous wave equation we did on the previous video, you would get just different eigenfunctions, but you would still get this kind of relation coming out of it. Okay. Also, you should note if uh, qn is zero, well then, this gives us that a n of t is equal to a n of zero, right? So the initial condition, which is just the same initial condition as if you didn't have that forcing there, and then e to the minus k lambda n t, which is the homogeneous solution, right? So really the only sort of new part is coming from this piece right here, which is coming from the external source. So the really beautiful part here is that we can now solve more complicated partial differential equations, something that maybe you would have thought early on in this lecture series that was completely unapproachable, right? Something that maybe we weren't able to do, even though I derived a really you know, general equation. But you were wrong, right? This is great news for us because now we can solve more complicated partial differential equations. And of course, we can make this even more complicated by having inhomogeneities going across this thing, plus external heat sources, right? So now we're really sort of stepping up the complexity and being able to solve more complicated partial differential equations. In the next video, when we come back, we're gonna look at what happens if you have inhomogeneous boundary conditions. So if you're forcing the temperature at the ends of this rod, or for example, if you have a vibrating string and you're sort of forcing the spring on one, or the string on one end, then uh, you can also do these sort of methods of eigenfunction expansions and still solve these PDEs. So I'll see you all in the next video, everybody.